Hello, Soma family. My name is Liam B. and I'm here to read through um, John 18, 15 through 18, and John 18, 25 through 27 today. Um, but before I read that, I just want to uh, share some a fun fact with you. Uh, in Jewish culture, the number three is significant. And I'm going to share this with you because of what takes place in our reading. Uh, so there are two different things. We talk about uh, completeness or wholeness. We think of the Trinity. Um, that is one way to think of it. And then another uh, way that it is used um, in Jewish culture is it's uh, something to emphasize something. So um, an intensity, you know, uh, in Revelation, it says that um, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And what we're going to uh, read about today is something that takes place in uh, threes. And let's jump in. We're going to be reading out of John 18. And uh, here we go. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them standing and warming himself. And as we continue down, already strike one has been made. Here we'll continue reading in John 18, 25. And it says, Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it and said, I am not. Strike two. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the rooster crowed. That was strike three. Um, now, I just want to talk a little bit about this. Um, obviously, as we are preparing our hearts for the crucifixion of Jesus, the death and the resurrection, um, Peter was one of Jesus' 12 disciples, and he loved Jesus. He followed him everywhere he went. He was uh, one of the closest disciples. He witnessed a lot of miraculous things that Jesus um, did, and, um, and he was passionate. He had so much passion and zeal for everything that um, Jesus spoke on, for his actions. Peter really was there to emulate and follow Jesus after what Jesus was doing. And, um, but the thing with Peter is that he, his passion and a lot of things that he did was really came from his flesh. So he had a boldness, but it was really not so much a boldness of the Lord, but it was a boldness that came from his own strengths and his own um, willingness and ability. And so even, uh, you know, one of the servants, it, me it made mention in the book of John that it was one of the relatives of uh, the soldier that Peter had cut off his ear, which is, you know, an emphasis on um, just Peter's rage. He wanted to protect Jesus, right? But that was the wrong way to do that um, in his flesh. And um, as we just go on about that, how many times have we sat down and, um, you know, denied what Jesus has called us to do, right? To love our neighbors. How many times have we said no? Peter did it three times. And as I said in the beginning, that's one of those things in Jewish culture that emphasized that, that he is not a disciple of Jesus. And he did it one time and he did it two times. And then he did it the third time, which emphasized truly hit where in his flesh where it was and um, that needed to happen in order for, for Peter to be filled with a sorrow and realize, you know, that he needed to make that change and come around to that. And um, it, it, he realized that that was something that 
hurt his rabbi, um, denying him. And Jesus actually had told Peter that this would take place. And Peter argued with Jesus, saying that that was not, uh, he would never do that. So um, even then in his flesh, he, 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 he did not realize how weak he could be when he's walking alone. Um, and, and so he had to be brought very low to realize how much he actually truly authentically needed Jesus. And so as we're just preparing our hearts this week for, um, you know, uh, the events that took place 2,000 years ago, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, it was our own actions even to this day that, you know, led to us needing a Savior. And, um, and for Jesus to be that, that and, and also overcome death with that victory over um, our sins. And whatever it is that we've done that has brought us low, that has, you know, essentially we've denied Jesus three times, whatever that is, we are forgiven. You know, Jesus was able to, to go to Peter and, and redeem that and say, do you love me? And Peter, you know, Jesus asked him that three separate times. And the beauty of that is Peter was like, yes, yes, Lord, you know I love you three separate times. And that was that moment where Peter was able to say and realize that he was forgiven um, and that to not be ashamed of what he had done, that Jesus still loved him and Jesus trusted him after that. You know, he said to feed my sheep. Um, to take care of those believers, you know, and we are just as forgiven and just as trusted when we submit our, our, ourselves, who we are, and all-encompassing at the feet of Jesus. And so I actually want to encourage you today to um, just allow your, your hearts to be softened and um, as you're with your friends, your family, perhaps yourself, to just kind of go back and read Luke 22, 31 through 34, and also John 21, 15 through 19, for some additional context on just Peter's journey on what um, brought him to that point on his interactions that led to him denying Jesus and how Jesus also forgave him and how Peter was able to, at that point, understand what it was to be a true follower of Christ. Something that I think is fun, um, would be fun to do as a family, would be to talk about things. You know, what's something, I have a fun question, what um, did the three wise men bring to Mary and Joseph after baby Jesus was born. Um, just a fun little conversation you guys could have with your family over dinner or just jot it down in your journal. Um, just for, you know, just a, a reminder of Jesus was a baby. He was born a man. He walked this earth and he did it all for you and his love for you. So um, let's just go ahead and close in prayer. And uh, as we just celebrate this time, uh, preparing our hearts for what Good Friday will bring. And then, of course, Sunday, what happens on Sunday. So, uh, Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this week, for Holy Week, as um, it is a, a time set apart where we can um, just remember your love for us. You're, you're individually um, speaking to us throughout um, the process of your imprisonment, your beating, your um, crucifixion, and you being buried and then um, overcoming the grave and defeating death. Lord, we are forever and eternally grateful that we get to um, say yes to a love that is so deep and so true and so um, redeeming. And uh, we thank you for that. Amen.